What's up guys, Rick here with my top fades for this week's Northern Trust. This is your weekly reminder that fades are all relative. If it's a guy at the top of the board, like a, I don't know, Rory McIlroy, if I fade him, that means I probably think he's not going to finish in the top five or top 10 of the golf tournament. If it's someone further down, more of a long shot, it may, might mean that I think he's going to miss the cut. Essentially, it just means that I do not think they are going to perform up to their standards or up to their baseline. So that's my usual weekly disclaimer. Let's jump into the fades for this week. And let's start with the aforementioned Rory McIlroy and to fade him... It hurts. This is a tough pill to swallow considering he's won at TPC Boston twice since 2012. He also won here in 2016. He has a, another top 10 and another top 15 finish. But Rory McIlroy, for me, it all comes down to one thing, and it is the iron game. Since the tour has come back, he has not been nearly as good with his irons as he was before the break. And that's really what is holding him back. Now, unfortunately, if it was the putter that was holding him back, I'd be much more willing to invest considering that is a highly volatile stat from week to week, from round to round. It's a lot easier for putting to turn in iron either direction, but for your iron play, for the strokes gained approach numbers, we don't usually see those bounce around as much. So we would normally see a natural progression, a some type of improvement for Rory McIlroy over a handful of weeks before we declare him back in that stack category. And we're just not seeing it. He's stuck in neutral. He is tour average. And that's not good enough if you're Rory McIlroy. So when you put all of that together and you have a bunch of other guys that I'm willing to invest in at the top of the betting board, at the top of the player pool, for me, Rory McIlroy becomes a uh, scary but necessary fade. Next up on the fades is Tiger Woods. And again, this is a scary one. This is one I hope I'm wrong on. My life will be better on Sunday if Tiger Woods wins this golf tournament. But I'm a little bit concerned about his actual chances of doing that. It's it's the flat stick, right? He's been hemorrhaging strokes on the green this year. And while it's only been a handful of events, the fact that he was willing to go to the backup putter the last time we saw him at the PGA Championship to try to alleviate some of those struggles, to try to help with the practice time, that's not something you necessarily do when things are going great, when things are fine and dangerous. Andy. So when you take that and you look at generally what we get in terms of ownership when it comes to Tiger Woods, which is no matter what his chances are of winning the golf tournament, he's always going to be over-owned. Uh, it's hard to invest in someone like that. It's just, it's 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 rare that he is going to hit uh, value enough times based on what his actual ownership is going to be because people are excited to play Tiger. Now, especially even more so when we only get him four or five times a year, you have to you have to get him in your lineups when you get the chance. And I think that is what we're going to see happen this week at the Northern Trust. And I could not be overweight on a guy when you put all of those things together. Brooks Kepka is another fade for me, and I might as well just name all the big dogs in this field as fades. This is certainly bound to backfire at some point, but I, I really believe that Brooks kind of messed up his schedule or at least did not intend to play now heading into his seventh week in a row. Let's be real here. If you are a top player in the world, you don't play seven weeks in a row. And if he makes it somehow to Eastlake, it'll be nine straight weeks for Brooks Kepka, And you really only do that out of either necessity or desperation. I think it is necessity for Brooks Kepka, who has not been playing all that well, or I guess hasn't been consistent. We've seen spurts of greatness from Brooks Kepka, but uh, he hasn't been able to, to keep it going for multiple weeks in a row. A missed cut at the Wyndham Championship to go along with his missed cut at the 3M, his missed cut at the Workday. Really, the only places we saw him really look like Brooks Kepka was 
WGC FedEx St. Jude, and then the first three rounds of the PGA Championship. Some of the quotes that Kepka has put out are, are not great. He's mentioning how you know, uh, tired he is, uh, physically, mentally. Uh, I just find it hard to believe that he will be able to kind of muster all of this from what we've seen in the last six or seven weeks of how he's been playing to put it all together this week. And even when you remove a lot of the narrative stuff, the putting stroke has been terrible. He's been just giving away strokes on the greens. Even the short putts no longer feel automatic. So Brooks Kepka is in uh, currently no shape to get much of, inv of an investment from me. I'm going to double down on Justin Rose here. He was a fade last week, and I think he continues to remain a fade. And it's this is all in the statistical profile. The, the top 10 at the PGA Championship was thanks to an unbelievably scorching putting week where he gained over seven strokes on the field. Quite frankly, we are now at five straight events for Justin Rose where he has not looked like the Justin Rose that we would expect to see, which is a guy who gains a ton of strokes from tee to green, specifically the ball striking numbers. So five straight events, he has been pretty poor. The the top 10 at the PGA Championship masks a lot of that, but that's really all through the putter. So you have to go back all the way to the RBC Heritage and the Charles Schwab Challenge, the first two events of the restart, which is when we saw Justin Rose be the Justin Rose that we know. So we are now what? Six weeks removed from that? Over a month? Almost two months removed from really good Justin Rose? I'm concerned that this is becoming a trend in the same way that Rory McIlroy, I mentioned... You know, these ball striking numbers don't they don't flip from week to week all that quickly. They are slower to respond. I continue to remain concerned about Justin Rose's prospects until he shows me something otherwise. And finally, Billy Horschel is my last fade for the Northern Trust. And, and this one's tough because objectively, Billy Horschel is a very good play. He played well last week. Yes, he putted the lights out, but he also uh, struck the ball beautifully. And Billy Horschel... He's a great putter in general. More on that in a second. But we know the narrative about Billy Horschel, right? It's it's the fact that he's won the FedEx Cup uh, playoffs before. He's won back-to-back -back playoff events. This is Billy Horschel season. That's something you're going to hear all week long. And I think it's going to drive up his ownership in fantasy formats to a point where it becomes a bit untenable. And while... Billy Horschel is always a very good putter. Uh, that putting event that he had last week at the Wyndham Championship was his best in a full year, so it's hard to believe he's going to even be able to replicate that. Sure, I expect him to gain strokes putting, as he normally does. I just don't expect it to be as many, and when you have a bunch of owners flocking to him at a specific price point, and, and with all of this you know, game theory involved, like I don't want to be part of a 25 5% uh, owned Billy Horschel. I'm going to take a pass. And if Billy bites me, I'll understand it because objectively he's a good play, but I will not be involved in him too much this week. There you go. My fades for the Northern Trust. Uh, I feel like I might have bitten off more than I can chew here. There's a lot of big names and bullets that I am going to have to avoid uh, this week if I want to be correct. But let me know who I've got wrong, who you would rather fade, or which one of my guys is someone you are going to be rostering a ton of. Tweet me at Rick Rungood or leave a comment below. I'll talk to you guys soon and best of luck this week.